Jesus died on the cross at Calvary. And that's when Jesus cried out, Father, Father, it is finished. He has finished everything. He said, you have finished everything. And that's where we get our healing. He got his healing in his body, in his knee. Maybe you need your healing in your finances. You need a healing in the marriage. You need a healing in your business. You need a healing even in your family. Wherever you need repairs, that is healing. And therefore, as we take this song again, wherever you need your healing, apply the meaning of this song, the power in this song. The power in what Jesus said is finished. It is finished to that area, and God will finish it for you. Calvary. for Jesus' church. And let's all be seated. Church, God is spirit. The God that we serve, the God that we worship, he is spirit. So the Bible said that he's a spirit, but I prefer he's spirit. The title for today's sermon or message is God is spirit. God is spirit. God is spirit. And for our scripture, we go to John's Gospel. John's Gospel, chapter 4, verses 23 to 24. John's Gospel, chapter 4, 23 and 24 God is spirit but the hour is coming this is Jesus speaking but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship the father in spirit and truth for God the father is seeking such to worship him God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Beloved, there are four, there are four descriptions of God in the Bible. Four descriptions of God in the Bible that teach us how men, especially how we believers, must relate to him. The number four is of great significance in the Bible. Four is of great significance. And there are many things in the Bible that are four in number. For example, we have the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It is not for, so it wasn't by chance, for a reason, four Gospels. There are many things in the Bible that have number four. And these four descriptions describe God 
especially in the way you and I must approach him. We must see him, know him, worship him, relate to him, so that he will appreciate, God will appreciate your worship of him and bless you accordingly, reward you accordingly. Simply because many of the blessings that we get are indeed a reward, a reward. The Bible says that children, even children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. It's a reward. Therefore, there are four descriptions. One of them is God is spirit. The Bible says we're going to go into this. God is also light. God is light. God is love. And the fourth one is that God is a consuming fire. So these are the four descriptions that God is, God is, God is, God is. All the other things are inclusive of these things. God is spirit. God is light. God is love. And God is a consuming fire. Now, the Bible says in John 4, 23, 24, our text, that the hour is coming, and now this is the hour. Jesus said that this is the hour. The hour has come. Uh, when the true worshipers, worshipers, not where there are some true worshipers, there are false worshipers, and there are fake worshipers. We're not talking about those who don't worship God at all. Those who, who don't hide their father, they don't worship God. But those who, worship, who, those who worship God, there are some who are true worshipers. Others are fake worshipers. And yet others are false worshipers. Knowingly or unknowingly, they may not know it, or they may know that they are fake or false. But it's a pity for those who don't know it thinking that they are worshiping God, but in the eyes of God, the way God sees their worship, it is false or even fake. In contrast to those that God sees as true worshipers, true worshipers. And Bible says that God is seeking such to worship him. In other words, these are few. If God has to go around searching, God has to go around searching for such to worship him. My understanding of this is that true worshipers are actually few. There are not many. If God, the Lord God Almighty, had to seek, look hard, searching for such people to worship him, then such worshipers, these worshipers are few. They are not common. They are not many. They are not many. And the distinguishing feature, what identifies the true worshipers, is that they are worshiping God, the Father, in spirit and in truth. The thing is that God is spirit. God is spirit. And because he is spirit, because God is spirit, you cannot worship God outwardly in the flesh. The flesh and the spirit have nothing or very little to do with each other. So worshiping God in the flesh or by outward appearance, by special, some special rituals that is not prescribed by the word of God, or even in special places, worshiping God outwardly, by outward appearance, to be seen, be worshiping God, by using special rituals, ceremonies, that cannot be found in the Bible. That's not how God wants us to worship him. Or in places where God has not 
approved, endorsed, like having your wedding at home, having your wedding at the beach, or, an, or at an event center, which is not a house of God. You want God to witness, God, and God to witness your wedding, your marriage, and yet you have the marriage in an event center. Sometimes the beach, Mami Wata's headquarters. That's where you are having your wedding. You want God to come and, 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 and endorse it, bless it. Rituals. Unusual places. That's not how God wants us to worship him. God wants us to, his children, all men, to worship him in spirit and in truth. That's why God gave us spirits. Every human being is made up of three parts. The spirit, which is the inner man, the inner man. The spirit is the part of man that can connect with God. You cannot see it, but that what gives you life. When God breathed into the nostrils of Adam, and Adam became a living being, God, God put life into that statue that he made. If God were to go and, I think I hear uh, our president has put a statue at where, where is it a Takradi, eh? Takradi. Why didn't he put in a crowd, Takradi? He didn't want it to disappear, eh? But next morning it will be gone. <laughs> if God is to breathe into that spirit now, we will have two presidents in the country. <laughs> Hello? Life will really go into that one. That, that starts to become a living being. So the connection between man and God is through our spirit. Then our spirit now relates to our souls. The flesh, the body, is the last part. The body is the lowest part of, the, of man. So if you worship God with your body, worshiping God by your outward appearance, you are wasting time. Worshiping God with your spirit, in the spirit, is the best we can do. Because the spirit in you is the only part of you that can connect with the Holy Spirit. Because the two are spirits, they can connect. Electricity with electricity. Water with water. Fire with fire. You can't connect wood to electricity and expect the electric power to flow through wood. No, it doesn't. So God said that you must worship God in spirit and in truth. And you do so sincerely. Truth means you do so sincerely, honestly, truly, you know, lovingly. It's not something that is forced on you. It is not being forced on you. You don't worship God because if you don't worship God, people, people will laugh at you. People say things about, so you have to worship God so as to please men. You worship God to please God sincerely, truly, honestly, and cheerfully, willingly. You enjoy doing so. Truth. Truth also stands for the word of God. Worship according to the word of God. Worship according to the word of God. The Bible says that, but the hour is coming, and now it is the hour. When the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. Why? Because God is spirit. Verse 24 says, God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Otherwise, anything apart from this is either fake, false, and it's not acceptable. It is not recognized by God. It's just a waste of time. It's not recognized by God. And for that reason, God now is seeking such to worship him. There are not many, few. So God has to go looking. And my prayer that today, after today, everyone in FCAC shall be a true worshiper of God. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Now, Philippians 3, 3. When you go to Philippians 3, 3. Philippians 3, verse 3. Philippians 3, verse 3 says, For we are the circumcision. We are the circumcision. 
who worship God in the spirit. Philippians 3, verse 3. Philippians 3, verse 3. The Bible said that circumcision was, you know, in the days of Moses, um, every male child had to be circumcised. And it's only when you were circumcised that you became a true child, the son of Abraham. If you are not circumcised, yes, you were born male, but if you are not circumcised, you were not a true Israelite. The circumcision now brought you into the family of Abraham, the family of God, family of Israel. Otherwise, you were um, not. You were Jacob, but now become Israel. I always said, we are the true circumcision. In other words, it's not by outward, it's not by different, but spiritually, we are the true, we are the circumcision. Who worship God in their spirit. And here, the spirit is capitalized. The Holy, we worship God in the Holy Spirit. How can you worship God in the Holy Spirit? Unless you worship him with your spirit that can connect with the Holy Spirit. Then he said, we are the ones who rejoice in Christ. If we worship God in the spirit, we also rejoice in Christ. You cannot, it's not possible to worship God in the spirit and not to rejoice. Even though we are going through challenges and not to rejoice, we still rejoice in Christ Jesus. And you have no confidence in the flesh. I said, and have no confidence in the flesh. You don't worship God in the flesh, not outwardly. Everything is spiritual. And I thank God that God called me into a ministry of the Holy Spirit. My calling is, is, is sharply, precisely, a ministry in the Holy Spirit. Right from the beginning, Right from Bible school. It has been getting better and better. And therefore, many are those who come to this church and because they want to worship God outwardly, they don't want to worship God in the flesh, they are not able to stay. They come a few times, they, go and they never come back. But those of you who love God, rejoice in Christ, you rejoice being in FCAC. And may you rejoice being in FCAC. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Clap your hands for Jesus. So he said, God is spirit. This is the reason why we must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is also light. God is light. Just say light. light. Say light. light. First John chapter 1. I go to first John chapter one, verses five to seven. First John one five to seven. First John chapter one. Verses five, six, and seven. Verse five says, This is the message which we have heard from him, that from Jesus, from God, and declare to you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is the message. The apostles of the Lamb, John being one of them, apostles, they were the first to hear the message. And this message has been passed on from generation to generation, century after century, written down in the canon, the word of God. There's a message, and the message needs to be heard. 
when the message is given to you, it means that it has to be passed on. It's a, you become a messenger. You have to pass on the message. And what is that message? What is the message that has been passed on? Because some people have passed it on, generation to generation, though it is written in the, in the, in the Word of God, the Bible, if it's not passed on, people don't hear and, become, and believe, they will not even bother to read the Bible. Yes, it's written there. But it has to be heard. Then when it is believed, then you search and then you become interested in reading and finding out more. So, this is the message, verse 5, which we have heard. You don't breathe the message. You don't drink the message. You hear it. You hear it. And they, they heard it from Jesus. They, we have heard from him. And declared to us and declared to you. And so on and so forth. Throughout the generations, centuries. And the message is this, God is light. We're going to look at it briefly. God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. The message doesn't start, stop there. It says, now, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. That makes, makes, makes us liars. It makes you a liar. And you do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, then we have fellowship with him. We have fe that, that makes you true worshiper. You have fellowship with him and with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Now, light stands for holiness and righteousness. When we say light, light for us stands for holiness and righteousness. We all know light and we know darkness. We know light and we know darkness. And we know that light is good. When light goes off in Ghana, as soon as light goes off, here, everybody, oh, you listen to your neighborhood. You hear, oh, in the light is off. Then when the light comes back on, hey, do you hear that in your, in your area? Yes. And it's interesting that even in the human eye, the human eye that we see light with, with the human eye, there are two, there are two cells, two kinds of cells with which we see light. And the two cells are all meant to see that. No cell is in the eye designed to see darkness. There's one cell that is designed to see light even in darkness. That gives us night vision. So that when you are in the light, as you are in the light now, you are using one kind of cell to, which is designed, God has designed to see light. Now, if we should be plunged into darkness. If you watch, when the light goes off, immediately you can't see, you can't see anything at all. Then little by little, begin to see a little. Is that not so? Yeah. The other cells take over, and they are for night vision. God wants you always to see light, that even when there's no light in your eyes, there are, there are some special cells that are able to see the little light that is the darkness and magnified. So now you can see things in the darkness. And animals like cats, lions, and so on, they have a lot more of this night, night vision light. That's why cats are always running, walking about in the dark. They don't sleep. And when you look at their eyes in the dark, you see that, I see there's some, it's an it's a LED bulb. <laughs> because they, they have night vision cells in their eyes. Because God wants us to see light, not darkness. Church, clap your hands for Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because light stands for righteousness and it stands for holiness. Darkness, on the other hand, stands for sin and evil. So when John says that God is light, what he saying that God is holy and God is righteous. 
In God, there's only holiness and righteousness. Then he says what? In him is no darkness at all. There's no sin and there's no evil in God. No sin and no evil in God. God is only holy and righteous. Hello? We go to John, John, John Gospel chapter 1. Let's go to John chapter 1. Verses 5 and 9. John 1. 5 and 9. John 1, verse 5, first says, And the light shines in the darkness. The darkness did not comprehend it. The darkness did not overcome it. The light shines in the darkness. The darkness did not overcome it or comprehend it. Then verse 9 says, That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. Jesus the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. What the Bible is saying here that in the same way as light takes away darkness, if you walk into a room that is dark, as soon as you switch on the light, darkness disappears. You, can, you don't switch on darkness that can quench the light. No, it's always the light that drives away the darkness. It means that as a human being, as a human being, especially as a believer, if you would decide, endeavor to put inside of you light, holiness, and righteousness. Every evil, not to mention any sin, every evil that is following you, every sinful thing that they are placed on you will disappear, gradually dissipate. Hello? If you agree with me, say Amen. Because darkness cannot, no way, cannot overcome light. It's light that always overcomes darkness. Holiness and righteousness. If you take this upon yourself, and this is true, any evil, any sinful thing that the enemy has pronounced on you, following you, chasing you, your loved ones, will quickly disappear. Will quickly disappear. Because he, if you say, if you say we have fellowship with God, fellowship means communion. Fellowship means being in the presence of Christ. Fellowship means having the company of the Holy Spirit. If you want to have the company of the Holy Spirit, you want to have Christ fellowship, company, friendship with you. With you, because he's light, you should also be light. He cannot have fellowship with you if you are in darkness. If you walk in darkness, he cannot. Therefore, I say, if we say, we, you know, we have fellowship, if you say we have fellowship with him, and yet we walk in darkness. And when you say darkness, it doesn't mean some of the things that you think of. It doesn't mean you go and commit murder or steal, adultery, fornication. We're talking of everything that comes from the kingdom of darkness. If you say you have fellowship with him and you walk in darkness, the Bible says that you are, you, are, you are a liar. You are a liar. And that you do not practice the truth. But if you walk in the light, then you have fellowship with him. God will be more than pleased to be in your company at home, where you work, where you, wherever you go, the Lord will be with you. I mean, the Lord be with you wherever you go. In the name of Jesus. Clap your two hands for Jesus. There are many of us who are not able to obey these simple, simple instructions. Because of social, family, even occupational constraints. Somebody in your office, you have an office colleague whose mother's, mother's friends, uncle, 
grandfather had died at Ostri Bompesi. The, 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 the funeral had nothing to do with you. It's, far, it's, it's as far from you as the north is from the south. And yet, you cut church service to attend the funeral where a sample is flowing, appetition is smelling there. How are you, man? Hello? A bucket, a door, swear, you know, swear, you know, Oh, there's, a, there's a group of souvenirs. Have you, have you heard that before? You have a Santi region. The, the specialists in funerals, they have Adwa, they have Kete. You know Kete? They have souvenirs. The Volta region also, they have a ball boy, and other, other, you know. And then you go there, and then you come back, and you, when you go there, you have fellowship. Then you're having fellowship, but not with the Holy Spirit. Fellowship with other beings, other spirits. Now, John chapter 3, verse 19. John's gospel, chapter 3, verse 19. 319. The Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 19, and this is the condemnation. This is the condemnation. That the light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. Holiness and righteousness are coming to the world. But men like sin and evil. We, because we, we, we enjoy evil things, sinful things, we don't want to come to the light. Therefore, when it comes to choosing between the presence of God and something else, we always choose that something else. It's only when that something else is nothing, there's nothing to do with that something else. Then we come to the house of God. Bible said that this is what condemns us. This is, this is what condemns us. And this is the condemnation. That the light has come into the world. The light has come. We, we didn't, where would you have found it? Where would you have gotten it from? It has come to you. Come to you. And men love darkness rather than, the, rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. And again, let's go to... John again, John again, chapter 8, verse 12. John 8, verse 12. John 8, verse 12. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, John chapter 8, verse 12. I'm the light of the world. I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Have the light of life. I like that. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness. When you have the light, you have life. You have life. The light of life. And finally, John 12, verse 46. John 12, verse 46. Verse 46. Jesus speaking again in John 12, verse 46. He says, I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. Imagine abiding in darkness, living in darkness when there's light. I've come as the light of the world. <laughs> I've come as the light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. Abide is where you live, where you dwell, where you reside. Abide in darkness but in the light. Church, God is light. Oh, God is light, church. Amen. Now the third God is, the third, the number three God is, is that God is love. Church, say God is love. First John, chapter 4, verse 16. First John 4, 16. God is love. First John chapter 4, verse 16. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hello? Oh, have you heard that uh, your brother, um, what is it, Daniel Akpenesika is now a pastor or something like that? We saw him on Facebook, and 
People were saying, wow, man of God, wow, man of God. Why did he become man of God? <laughs> I'm saying this so that uh, maybe he will contact some of you. Um, he came to me a few weeks ago and said that um, God was telling him to go to DHS schools and, and witness or counsel DHS pupils. And I say, they are okay. People who have ambition to become pastor and not cancer, they always start by God is sending me somewhere. When they themselves are saying, oh, no, 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 no. And this is It's not so, no. So he wanted my blessing, you know, the SGAC's blessing. I said, look, we only, bless those, we, only, we only bless those who are going to ministry, who have things to do, not someone who doesn't have anything to do. You are just now touching here, and they don't have, you are not establishing anything. You know, um, ministry now is not a profession. It's not a profession. Ministry now, it has never been a profession. It's based on calling. God calls you. Even then, it's not a profession. So when you, you don't have anything to do in, excuse me, no nothing, no work, no income for years, you don't know, you are struggling, struggling. Then you say, God has called you. God doesn't call struggling people. Hello? So you want people to go and work in the sun, go and sell cooked egg, or kushia anwane, you know, I look at them in the sun, you know, kushia anwane makuno Work the whole day, then come and give their tithes and offering. Now, what you want to do now is such a wouldn't you yet? So, I said, No, no, uh, you won't get my blessing. Let's and then they left the church. Now, here now is a pastor with TT or Fair Ministries. You know, but normally, before you can do this, you have to get recommendations from your, your pastor. You know, you need recommendation. Uh, if you attend Bible school, your, your church must must approve of you. And I will not approve him for any, 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 any Bible school. So now people are calling him man of God. I'm saying it because he may call some of you and say that, oh, God is doing mighty miracles in my church, so come and join me. He may call some of you. I'm sure he has called some of you already, but you, don't, you won't tell me. <laughs> God, is, oh, God raised the dead in my church last week. <laughs> so Come. Hey, in my church, we see, we see fire coming. Fire, so come. I'm sure he has called many of you. I know if you call, you will not. That's what I'm telling you first. Hello? Praise the Lord. Clap your hands for Jesus. And there are many. And it, it will continue to happen. I know, I know many. Many who have left and they say they're pastor. You know Maswe Hatu? Maswe Hatu. You know, he's also a pastor. Maswe Hatu is a pastor. And, and not really here, but... Some of the branches, testing years, many of them have gone, and one of them left. And next, the next week, he was wearing clerical collar. <laughs> and his collar, you know, the collar that, the one that goes around the, the neck. Not mine is just here, isn't it? His collar is, you know, the white one. That's the one that he was wearing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's for your, for your information. <laughs> But I say, God is love. First John 4, 16. Are you there, somebody? <laughs> and, we have, and we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God. And God in him. 1 John 4, 16 says, And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. The first thing we need to know is that we, we, we ought to appreciate, know, know the kind of love that God has for us. We all know John 3, 16 and 17. John 3, 16. Can we all, you all, I think we can all recite it. For God so what? That. So that. Uh-huh. 
Uh -huh. Excellent, 100%. And 17? But that the world through him, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the weary, we, we should have been condemned. God, in coming to Israel, he found us condemnable. We qualified to be condemned. But God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But that the world, through him, might be saved. Through him might be saved. This is the kind of love. Greater love has no one than this. That the man should lay down his life for his friends. The man should lay down his life. So, we have to know and believe. Know the, the love and to believe it. That God has for us. And then when you appreciate, when you see this love that God has loved you with, you cannot live in hatred. You cannot hate, especially in the child of God. Knowing that this kind of love is indescribable. You can't even quantify it. It's so great, so huge. That how can God bestow such love upon you and then you hate somebody for some flimsy excuse, for some flimsy reason, you hate that person. Especially when you are supposed to love that person. Somebody you are supposed to love because God loves you. But you should also love that you hate that person. No. If you do not abide in this kind of love, then God will not abide in you. Because then in you is hatred. You have hatred in you. You have hate in you. And if you have hate in you, how can God, who is love, be in you? Fair John 3, 24. Fair John chapter 3, verse 24. Fair John 3, 24. Now, he who keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in him. And by this we know that he abides in us. By the spirit whom he has given to us. By the spirit whom he has given to us. Hmm. The ability to keep God's commandments. So listen carefully. Because there are some who try. They just cannot do it. They wish they could. They try using their own efforts. They can't do it. There are many who would like to be like you, Christians like you. There are some who, many who would like to be like you. In fact, they envy you. I, I wish I could be like Amelia. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I wish I could be like her, her husband, uh, George. You know, remember, uh, was it uh, George? Uh, we can only kill Nabita. George, when was, uh, was a baby. A baby. And they gave Nabita for something. And he recognized me. I was in the theater dress. He saw I'm a pastor. And he, <laughs> he wouldn't go to anybody in the theater. He was scared and crying. But when I lifted him, he recognized me. Hello? Praise the Lord. Recognize me. And I've said that many, many times when the children are born, you know, they are crying, nah, nah, nah. and I pray for some children in the theater, in the labor world. When I'm praying for them, the child is crying, nah, nah, nah. when I lay hands, they become quiet. It's amazing. Hello? Now, when you have love in you, when you have love in you, some things happen around you that you cannot explain. Because then Christ abides in you. Everything that you do that may look like a physical turns out to be spiritual. Turns out to be spiritual. Hello? Praise the Lord. God is love. God is love. And there are many who will like to be like you, to be able to obey the word of God. But when the time comes, he finds himself in the, in the spot, drinking. 
drinking. So when eventually they give her, they sometimes laugh at her, but they wish they would be like you or like me. They are not able. So your ability to obey God's commandments is proof that you have the love of God in you. That's the first thing you have to know. The ability to be able to obey God's commandments is proof that the love of God is in you. Now, the evidence, there's, a, there's proof and there's evidence. The evidence, the fact that you have the Holy Spirit. And if you have the love of God upon you, you have the Holy Spirit. Once you are able to obey the commandments of God, you shall have the Holy Spirit. Hello? Praise the Lord. Amen. And I've said, look, I've, I've seen many who have come here. This is the first time, first few days when they come and I pray for them and I tell them, there's no flow. No flow whatsoever. I don't feel the flow of the Spirit getting into them at all. And yet they've been Christians for a long time in some churches. They come here and I tell them, there's no flow. But I don't, I don't get worried. You can know where they've come from. And I know where they have come to. And I know where you have come to church. Amen. Give them a few weeks. One month, two months, three months, latest. They, now when I tell them that, whoosh, whoosh, they can see that having heard the unadulterated word of God, the pure milk of the word of God, now they have the spirit. Having now heard that now they are obeying the commandments or they are obeying the word of God, now the proof is that now they have the Holy Spirit. And sometimes I don't even need to touch them. Because when you have the spirit, though the spirit is inside of you, it's also around you and upon you. So that some radius around you, that, that area is Holy Spirit zone, Holy Ghost zone. And may one mile around you be Holy Ghost zone. In the name of Jesus. Clap your two hands for Jesus. And that's why everybody in this church must make it a point to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's important. The Bible said that is the seal. It is your seal. It's your stamp. It is your label for a day of judgment. When God sees the Holy Spirit in you, God will not cast you into hell if the Holy Spirit is in you. How can God wouldn't let you go to hell? Would the Holy Spirit go to, to hell? No. So if you have the Holy Spirit in you, Automatic entrance into heaven. Hello? Praise the Lord. I heard that uh, now, you know, this is by the way. For, uh, to come to Ghana too, those of you who want to travel outside to America, the new, the new government, coming, Trump's government, you know, there's a, and Trump is my man, you know. I like everything he does. <laughs> oh, I, I really like the man. I love him. Now he's saying that when he comes to office, Nigeria, you know Nigeria, there are Millions of Nigerians in America, they all go, they never come back. They go and study, they, they attain PhD, high professionals, and they stay there. So he's saying that when they come to power next January, all Nigerians who go to America to study, once you study, go back and develop your country in Nigeria. Who <laughs> said, I can't say empire. I said, I'm going to say, I love him. Because he, that, Emma, we don't know why. John, do you agree with him? Who goes, yeah, the awkward masters. And therefore, Michael, I think Michael Asian will come back. <laughs> Hello? Uh, oh, people, they go and study, they attend the engineering. He says, and if you qualify in Nigeria, if you qualify in, in America, you go back to Nigeria. If you qualify in Nigeria, we are a doctor, teacher. Nurse, engineer, professionals, they are America. We are all Macron, like I said, Obanoako. Metsnaho. Church, and yeah, and yeah, pa. You will in town, Kahaye. You will in town, Kahaye. What Kenyans are simple, Papa, 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 Papa. May God bless that man. In the name of Jesus. Hello. 
That, that man had the Spirit of God in him, you know. <laughs> he had the Holy Spirit in him. People don't know it. He had the Holy Spirit. <laughs> now, finally, God is a consuming fire. <laughs> God is a consuming fire. <laughs> Wonderful. Hello? Hebrews 12, verses 28 and 29. Finally, Hebrews 12. Not long ago, I met, I met two bishops from the U.S. They came to Ghana, and I had a chance to meet them, two bishops in one church. And you know, somehow, everybody in the world thinks that everybody wants to go to America, or at least to go to Europe. And when I told them, look, all my life, I've never, want, I've never wanted to go to America. They were shocked. I never wanted to go to America. They were surprised. Right from secondary school, primary school, everybody, what's it, SAT, TOEFL, doing exams, going to America. I never, I could have gone, for and after I And after I told them why I didn't want to go to America, you know what they said? Oh, we thank God that you stayed here. <laughs> That's what they said. We thank God that you stayed here. Many of my mates, all my mates are in America. Where are they? Hello? I'm going to come here farming. Uh-huh. Farming, and can't be time office, but yeah, farming, Pro, commercial farming, tractor, the animal, and cook, 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 can 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 crack frozen, uh, yeah, and crack frozen uh, uh, the beef, frozen chicken, uh, chicken wings, chicken thighs, chicken teeth, chicken legs. I then, <laughs> hello, praise the Lord. My name can you export to Kobe, Kobe, America, Kobe. America. So Hebrews 12, 28, 29. Therefore, Hebrews 12, 28 and 29. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Amen. Amen. This one is a, a blessing and a warning. <laughs> Therefore, since we are receiving, we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken. A kingdom which cannot be shaken. We should always be thankful. We should be thankful that we are, we are, we are receiving, we are in that kingdom. The kingdom doesn't start when you die. It is not when you die, then you end. No, the kingdom starts. Jesus said, repent. John said, repent. For the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You are already in heaven. You are already in that kingdom. Already in it. Therefore, we should rejoice. Having received this kingdom, and this kingdom cannot be shaken. It is indestructible. It cannot be destroyed. No one can do anything to it. Perfect kingdom. So knowing that you are in this, you have received this kingdom by free, free. You didn't buy it, you didn't pay for it, you didn't get passport or visa for it. Free. We should now therefore serve God in an acceptable manner to God. The way God wants us to serve him. Let's serve God acceptably reverence and godly fear. Why? Because this God, <laughs> don't joke with him. Don't mess with him. Hello? He's a consuming fire. He's a consuming fire. You know, we had an all night, I don't I forget it, we had an all night at Michel Camp. And uh, we had a sister, you no longer with us. You remember Helen Quay? Helen Quay came to the all night swollen arm. Her arm was swollen, painful, for about a week or two. Her whole arm swollen. She couldn't do anything with it. And she came to the all night prayer meeting. And when we began to pray for her, so some of you were there. And if you're not there, listen carefully. We began to pray for her, and a demon manifested. A demon came up and said, 
he, the demon, is the one giving her that swollen, painful, and he wants to kill her. What has she done? What has Helen done? All she did was to do good. Apparently, this lady, I've forgotten her name. Remember the name? This lady, she died later. What was it? Um, I've forgotten her name. It was a Muslim name. She sells rice in a, in a, a primary school. She sells rice. And the people come and buy. But that day, God did something wonderful for our sister Helen. God bless her. So she cooked rice. Cooked rice and went and gave her children free of charge. Give to all the children in the school. So that day, nobody bought this sister's rice. Nobody bought her rice. He said, ah, match there was said, look where Jane. So she attacked Helen. So the, the arm that she used to cook the rice, she can never cook again. And then when we were praying, the demon manifested and told all this to us. And when Helen came to, she confirmed it, that truly, yes, she, she went to distribute free rice to the children in the school. And then the next day, her arm was like that for about two or three weeks. He'd been to hospital, and that kind of thing, no doctor can stand against it. Hello? No doctor can diagnose it. No medicine will work. Only Jesus can save. So we prayed and cast out the demon. And I told Helen, Helen, that he should go to the school, tell the headmistress or whoever that they should not allow that woman to sell rice there again because definitely she was a witch. And if your children, that's why you should pray for your children when they are going to school. If you go and buy witchcraft rice, eating witchcraft rice. So she should, she, should, she should ban the woman from selling in the school. So Saturday, it was all night. She went there Saturday to tell the head teacher or whoever, only to be told that the time that we're praying, the time that we're praying and casting out this demon, the young, and she was a young woman. She just died suddenly. She died. So the next morning, the woman was dead. Because of our deliverance prayers, may God do so against all your enemies. Yeah. This is a true story. I myself, I was surprised. You remember? She, he, she came and said, oh, she, when she went to a school, only to be told that the woman died that night. Whenever we do deliverance here, we cast out demons, we, we, we pour the fire of God upon them. They feel it. They feel it. I've had many examples. So what we do here, what you see God doing here, it is not concert. It is not um, a fiera. It is not um, GBC or, what the, or, or Angel FM. No. I've seen many. Someone we pray for 2 a.m. 2 a.m., testing all night. Pray for her deliverance. As soon as she went to sit down, the enemy called her. I said, hey, uh, what was her name? Uh, that, that, Fuse, that. And then was food in half an hour. No, we had a bell. 2 a.m. 2 a.m. Food in person who has not spoken to her for three years. 2 a.m. Or friend, or it was you can that it pass her. On our friend, or friend was me and the bell. Has it two because we pour fire on them. Our God is a consuming fire. Yeah. Clap your hand for Jesus. So don't fear your enemies, they are afraid of you. Make sure your enemies fear you because they see the fire of God upon you and they cannot come near you. So they may look at, they are rather tormented, we are rather suffering. No, they are suffering far more than us. Anything that they do to you, may God do a hundred times to them also. In the name of Jesus. Clap your two hands for Jesus, church. Therefore, God said, we on our part, we must serve God acceptably reverence and godly fear. Because the God that we serve is a consuming fire. You see, it's a, it's a same thing as a God of love. He's a God of love to those who serve him acceptably. A God of love. Sometimes when, you, when I'm praying for some of you, of you they do something that uh, American God, Rabbi, I do something that some of you, now and then I have to explain to you what I do. When I want to show the love of God, 
that, that God loves you, don't worry, God loves you. Whatever happens to you, God loves you. Sometimes I use my hand. Sometimes I use my handkerchief. And when we come, you know, I just do this. You know, imagine God looking at you and God says, oh, you know, God just wiping your face like this. That is just to demonstrate how, you know, like you have a child, you have a child, you know, your daughter or your son. You have a friend, you find. Today I was, I was in the office just before church started. Then my granddaughter came. My granddaughters, Gabby and, uh, and uh, Marianne. And they came and Marianne said, oh, Grandpa, smell my hair. <laughs> That's how much God loves us. Daughter, God loves you. God loves you. She came and said, Gra Grandpa, smell my hair. And I smelled the hair. Very nice perfume. And I said, hey, what do you say? I use cream, and I use uh, this, and I use, I said, and then I use comb. She was very, and you know, I was happy to smell her hair. Hallelujah. Hey. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So when he said, God is love, you see, God loves you so that God will even smell your hair, a sweet aroma. You see, that is for us. But for our enemies, he's a consuming fire. Yeah. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. To your enemies, he's a consuming fire. Yeah. They flee when they see him coming. Yeah. And they don't dare not come near you yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is spirit. God is light. God is love. God is a consuming fire. In Jesus' name, amen.